Um, yo, this is some sad rant. What up there, anime and manga communities? This is your boy, Chitty, yeah, 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 or Chitty, or whatever the hell you just want to call me. And today, I'm here to talk about Magi Chapter 234. Now, this... Okay, I want to say something real quick. Um, right now, I really love this flashback of Magi. Like, I know a lot of people are saying it's dragging on, but me, personally, right now, right here, me... I think this flashback is excellently done. I really like this flashback. And I, if you don't, I, I don't like, okay, straight up, if you are not reading Magi, you need to go read this. Like now, see all this? See what I'm doing? You go, whatever, just go, go read it, go. <laughs> because seriously, this manga is shaping up to be a, like for real, Magi has full potential to become one of the big three. I feel like it could take, it's coming for the king's spot. <laughs> I feel like Magi could. Um, I've been feeling like that for a while though. Ever since I've been reading the series, I felt like it had the potential to be one of the next big ones. But anyways, let's get into the chapter at hand. And I just want to go ahead and point out this flashback was really sad for me. Like the, it, just the way it's all turned out was just horrible. And then the last, let me, Get into the chapter so the chapter starts off with, which with apparently a time skip i'm gonna assume it's a time skip because it just seems like an amount of time has passed and we don't know how much time it's been has it been a few months since solomon's become god or has it been years or i don't know but either way it goes some amount of time has passed since solomon became god and now sheba is trying to um what is it she's trying to have everyone swear their loyalty to solomon on like the ceremony day or whatever and Arba says that it's not the time. Like, no, this is not the time for that. The mages still haven't figured out what it is that they want, if they are okay with this yet. And she, it, it, the artwork especially, it makes Sheba look like she's gone crazy since Solomon went and joined uh, God. And it, it's kind of true. In a way, Sheba's being blinded. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, she can't see what's going on around her because of how much she wants Solomon's dream to come true because she lost Solomon to his dream. She wants to see that dream come to fruition at the very least so that his loss meant something. But because of that, that mad dog drive, it's actually screwing her over in the end. And you, you find out how badly it screws her over at the end of this chapter. So from there, we skip over to the day. Then from there, we start talking about what Sheba did to balance the power. She had Ugo and herself do research and create these these 72 uh what is it items that when you use them they give you great magical power, which we all know these are the jinn. And she gave them to each each one of, of the chieftains of each uh race. She gave one of these uh these items from you know made from the same things as divine stabs and all that. So that now everyone's balanced and people have now have their own zones and cities. Everything's just looking good. Peace is finally looking like it's here. But peace, we love war anyway. <laughs> well, that's at least what Arba says, because on the day of ceremony and swe swearing fealty, what ends up happening is Arba stages a coup. And what we find out is she's, she and her own group have been working on creating Black Rook. And turning the well not creating taking the white rook and turning it back into its black roots and this is bad because now they can just take white rook and turn it into black rook and they can take well so all they have to do is absorb white rook around them turning it into black rook and now they have unlimited freaking power which is what the god of the verse is doing he's doing that same thing so they're just you doing what he's doing they also learned how to create creatures out of the black rook so that's how those little freaking demon creature things in the series came about and man dude it was going like you know what i want to say real quick about uh falon ethnan and uh what is her name aru i think oh no not aru and wahid those three right falon and wahid lost their child ethnan lost his brother right my question is, right, if that was so horrible for you, if war was so bad for you and your family and those that you cared about, why then would you start yet another war? 
Like that, that that made me like I actually stopped to think about that and to see just how stupid depravity has made them. Because to me, if I lose someone, I'm not going to want to put someone else through the same loss. No, I'm going to be like, let's never let another war happen again. So we ain't got to do this again. It makes no sense. But they they in it. They they, they, they are part of Al Thamen. And here we are. So from there, we see Shiva and her her people coming up against Arba, but Arba being able to absorb Brooke can up her Megoida godly levels and pretty much she pretty much one shots body Sheba and leaves Sheba for dead and she uses Sheba's name like uh, she's using it like oh this the King Solomon the false god manipulated the queen and made her believe in his lies and all that so now I will make the world a place of peace and bring back Elila so this is basically the plot here and boy man it's just so crazy how this actually turned out to see people who were so loyal to Solomon before go this freaking evil. Like, it's just crazy. Like, I, I, how many mangas have you seen stuff, stuff like this happen before where you see people who are, you know, really trusted and, you know, trusting their leader and then they turn on them because of something. But I don't know why this one's so just so shocking to me. Maybe it's because they had like this. They, they all seem like they have this really family-esque connection and it's just sad to see family killing each other. And from there, she leave, Arba leaves Sheba for dead. And then when, by the time Ugo and the others get there, she's, you know, dead. And she comes out through the White Rook and tells Ugo, look, man, I, I didn't recognize the blackness in their hearts. I, my, the, my, I was blind. I wanted to peace so bad that I just couldn't see it. And now I have to leave it on you guys, but the child is still alive and his name is Aladdin. So 2014, it's Aladdin. I called it. Put that and hashtag that on Twitter. I called it because I freaking called it. I, I, I said it from Chubb. I said, look, that kid is Aladdin. Dude, there was no other, there was literally no other explanation. It, let's be real. Now I do have a question. How is it? that Aladdin is alive. His mother is dead, right? And when you have a kid, the kid, when you die, the kid dies. So like, at least that's how, I mean, I'm not a woman and I don't know like whole amounts of pregnancy things or whatever, but from my general understanding, if you die, so does that kid. So as long as the kid's in your stomach. So uh, how is this working here? Like explanation, I mean like, yeah so yeah we, we have confirmation that aladdin is the son of solomon and sheba and the the last thing that's pretty much the end of the chapter i just want to talk about this last thing to where er, earlier in the video i mentioned how they all seem like they were just this close-knit family and then you go back then sheba has this one last flashback where she talks about how she wants to be with everyone her new family and she wants to protect that peace and live in peace with them all. And they're all laughing and having fun back in the days when they first met. And now here we are killed. She's been killed by the people that she wanted to love and that she loved and protected. And that's a really, that's really probably one of the saddest points of this flashback besides that horrendous uh, kid being burnt. I don't even want to talk about that anymore, but next week should be the last chapter of the flashback or second to last chapter of the flashback. And it's just really, I, I'm really wondering how Aladdin's going to take him being the son of God. <laughs> and I do wonder how the other kingdoms, uh, how uh, uh, the other guys are going to take this. Like Cohen and Sinbad and Alibaba. Will this send them into depravity knowing, like, it's just, it's just crazy, man. Like, we're just going to have to wait and see. So all in all, really like the chapter. This is, and I'm going to go ahead and call that a let's talk. So this is your boy, Chitty. Yay, or Chidio, whatever the hell is you want to call me, signing out. Please be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe and do other things to help the Black Brother thrive. And I will catch you guys on the flip. It's been Golden. Peace out, anime and manga communities.